Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and as you might know, I just recently announced my next Steam game. It's called Total World Liberation. It's an open world survival, crafting, automation, building, turn based strategy game. That's a lot of genres, lots of interlocking systems. Go ahead and add it to your wishlist. In the announcement video, I showed quite a lot, and there were a bunch of questions regarding what assets I'm using to make the trailer and the game a reality, so over here, let's look at those. I'm going to showcase what assets I'm using right now and which ones I will be using in the future as the game gets closer to release. That includes visual assets, some interesting effects, music and sound effects, and of course, a whole bunch of useful tools. There's links to everything that I'm using in the description. I made a list on the asset store with all the assets here. There's timestamps in the video. And also, by the way, this video is sponsored by Unity, which is currently having their Black Friday sale, which turns out great because a bunch of the assets that I'm going to highlight here are currently discounted. This sale is pretty massive, it's one of their biggest sales of the year, with over 500 excellent assets which are currently 50% off, alongside some daily flash deals with a bonus 70% off. And on top of that, Unity also gave me an exclusive coupon for you to use, code monkey BF 22 which will give you a bonus 10% off on orders over $100. Go ahead and browse everything on sale, you have the usual excellent assets like the A-Star Pathfinding Project to help you build games with thousands of pathfinding units, you have the Odin Inspector to help you build tools, the Shapes Package, which enables you to build interesting shapes in an easy and performant manner. There's Easy Save for easily adding saving and loading to your game, Rayfire for adding some really satisfying destruction, and a bunch more. I covered some more highlights in my other dedicated video, and I also have my asset review playlist. So check out the sale link in the description alongside all of the assets that I'm going to mention in this video. Pay close attention to the Flash Deals page, it shows you when the deals will happen, so don't miss on those excellent 70% discounts, and make sure you use the coupon code MONKEYBF22 to get an extra 10% off. Alright, so let's see what assets I'm using to make my Steam game a reality. The game is still in early development, but in order to announce the game, I needed to make the trailer, which meant that I needed some visuals, animations and effects. As I've said many times, one of the most important things nowadays is standing out. You need to stand out both in terms of game mechanics as well as visuals. I think mechanically the game idea is interesting enough to send out, having lots of interconnected systems mixing many genres, but as you might also know, I'm not an artist, so visuals are not my strong point. Thankfully, visuals are one of the easiest things you can just pick up from the asset store, so I focus really hard on achieving a good, interesting look, specifically by utilizing a bunch of interesting shaders. I tried a whole bunch of them before deciding on the final look. The first one I tried was Quibbly, this one is an excellent anime-inspired shader, it looks really awesome, with some very nice flat colors, it's extremely customizable, you can change the outlines, the color bands, gradients and so on, it can definitely achieve some awesome effects. Another excellent one that I tried was the Flat Kid Tune Shader, this one is one of the most highly rated assets on the store, again, excellent visuals, tons of customization, it looks really good. If you're looking for a cartoony stylized look, I can definitely recommend these two assets. However, with both of them, I felt it was a bit too cartoony. The game is meant to be fun to play, it's not intended to be something super hardcore, but still, I don't want it to look a bit too childlike. So the next one that I experimented was Pixelate. I actually used this one in a previous video, I bought it from a bundle a while ago. Like the name implies, this one helps make your characters pixelated. So if that's what you want, then it produces an excellent result. In my case, I did not want it pixelated, but thankfully with tons of options, you can lower the pixelation to almost zero, which makes for a very interesting look especially since you can add some really nice outlines. I really liked how this one looked when I made that video a while ago. However, again, the same issue, it looks a bit too cartoony compared to what I would like the game to look. Then I remember that I saw an asset in one of my top 10 list videos a while ago. I browsed my list and found it again, it's the screen space cavity and curvature. With this one, I felt it had the exact perfect visual that I was going for. It basically lets you add some more intense shadows and highlights. So I played around with settings, I eliminated the white overlay and just left the thick outlines. And with this, I think it does look pretty great. It looks exactly like I want it to look. It has some thick outlines, making everything look slightly cartoony, but the colors aren't extremely flat, so it doesn't look way too cartoony. So based on this, my advice to you is spend some time browsing the store and looking at all of the awesome effects that exist to make your game stand out. This becomes even more important if you, like me, are using asset packs, especially the Cinti packs, which are pretty popular. Using some awesome effects helps make the game stand out even while using some common assets. Another effect that I wanted was for the building scene. I wanted to showcase building mechanics with a building being constructed. I knew what I wanted in my head, something that would sort of 3D print the object. I went into the asset store to search and looked at a whole bunch of the solve effects. I browsed the list and ended up picking this one called the solve and materialize. It's a really awesome effect with tons of parameters and settings, so you can change it to make it materialize exactly as you want it. 
You can make it noisy, make it animated side to side, top down, or what I wanted, which was bottom up. It also lets you add colors at various points, which was perfect, so I was able to easily make the top part of the building glow as it's being built. I think this effect really came out looking quite well. Another effect that I used was on the survival scene. I wanted the scene sort of at night, but it looked way too boring and very static, so I added some lights. But of course, lights themselves only light the part where they hit, they have no volume. So I went into the store and it was great timing because Volumetric Lights 2 had just come out. It's an excellent, really easy to use asset that does exactly what you expect. You just attach the component to your light and it immediately creates the volume. Then you can play with the settings to get it looking exactly as you want. I made the outside a little bit softer, I increased the intensity to make it nice and visible, and it even includes a really nice particle effect that adds some fun fireflies to your light. Everything looks really nice. So if you have lights in your game and you want them to look quite a bit better, I can highly recommend this asset. So those are the main effects that I used, but of course visuals aren't just about adding extra shaders and effects. At its core, it all starts with post-processing. Here is the game with and without post-processing. As you can see, it's a pretty huge difference. Here are all of the settings that I'm using. First of all, I'm adding bloom because of course I want some glow. If you can't get your objects to glow, go watch my quick checklist video. The next effect is vignette. This one adds some darkness on the corners. I like it very subtle. I think it looks pretty good. Then for color grading, honestly, this is a topic that I really know nothing about. I just experiment with these three presets and neutral seems best. Then for color adjustments, here you can play around with contrast and saturation. For me, I like to add a little bit of contrast to make the game pop a little bit more. And same thing with saturation. Again, I'm going for a more chill atmosphere, not something extremely hardcore. So adding saturation to make the colors pop just a little bit, I think looks pretty great. Again, here it is, everything with and without post-processing. And if you combine it with the effect that I'm using, with this you can see a massive difference. Note how the assets are all exactly the same, it's really only a change in effects, but you can see how big a change it is. So again, definitely spend some time playing with post-processing and shaders to help your game stand out. I would even go so far as to say that you should never leave your game without any post-processing at all. In terms of particles, I just use some blood particles from this particle pack. It's another excellent pack with tons and tons of particles. The blood particles that I use are some mesh particles, which I quite like. It makes the blood feel nice and chunky, which I think fits the zombies. Okay, so those are the effects, but under those effects are the assets. As you've heard me say many, many times, I'm a huge fan of the Synthi style. I really like their low poly assets. So for this game, my very first 3D game, it made perfect sense to use them. The main pack that I'm using here is the Synthi Apocalypse. Since the game is post-apocalyptic with some zombies, this was the obvious pack. It's a massive pack with thousands of props, buildings, characters, vehicles, and just about anything. That's where most of these props came in, including the zombies. Although I also used props from several other packs. I can't remember exactly which ones. I grabbed some things from the heist pack, then a bunch more things from the city pack. The drones that I used, they are from the spy pack. Then I also picked up a few from the excellent military pack. I'll probably be grabbing some more from this pack as I implement different weapons into the game. So basically for the props, I just went through every pack that I had and picked out some props that I thought I would need. Here is a scene that I populated. I just went through every pack and dropped all the props that I thought I would need, dropped them here. So you can see I've got all kinds of things. So over here is like a transformer, then a bunch of cupboards, a bunch of sand traps, then some water thing. You also got to generate it somewhere, some trash, some power poles. There's some barbed wire, a ton of boxes, ton of crates, so pretty much just picked anything that looked like it might fit the theme of the game. Then when I was making the trailer scenes, I just went to this scene and picked up any objects that I needed. And for characters, I also picked up some from the city zombie pack, and in the future, when I make some more interesting zombies, I'll probably also grab a few from the boss zombies pack. And of course, one of the main benefits of using a low poly style is you can mix and match assets from different publishers. So I didn't just use assets from Synthi Studios, I browsed my asses for some more low poly packs and I saw they already owned this pretty massive pack from Polyperfect. I think I bought this one a few years ago and it keeps getting more and more updates with more and more assets being added. So I grabbed a bunch of props from that one. And another excellent low poly publisher is Animpix Studio. Specifically for my use case, they have some survival packs which fit perfectly. So I was able to grab assets from various packs and various publishers and they all match since they are all low poly. This is the main way that I, someone with no artistic skill, can produce a game that looks pretty great. It's all thanks to the asset store, which allows me to buy models and effects which I just could not produce myself. One thing that was extremely useful in finding and picking all of these props was the asset inventory tool. This is one of the most useful assets that I've seen. 
Basically, it lets you search inside every single pack you have without having to import everything into your own project. Here I've got a Unity project and I've got the asset inventory window, so I can just search, let's say, for bucket. And there you go, look at this, look at all the buckets that I have in all of my props, all of my Unity packages from all over the place. One especially useful thing about this asset is that it works with any Unity package, so it's not just limited to the ones you get from the asset store. Chances are you own some assets that you bought on a Humble Bundle, I certainly have a lot of those, and you can easily add those Unity packages to this tool and it will also search inside them. It works for finding visuals, but also works for literally anything else. For the trailer I wanted to add some extra sound effects to make it sound a bit more interesting, and again this asset was super useful. So over here I just search for zombie, and then on the right side I can select the type, so I can select just audio, and there you go, look at all of these zombie groans. Yet another super useful thing about this asset is how you can preview the sound without having to import the full pack. So I can select any of these, and let's say this one, and now I can click on the play button, and yep, that's the sound without having to import it directly into this project. Speaking of sound, most of the effects that I used in the trailer came from this pack. It's got almost 10,000 sound effects, really an insane amount. Just with this pack you can find pretty much everything. And for the music itself, I also checked out tons of songs to find something that fits. The main pack that I used was this one, the Total Music Collection. It's got over 800 music tracks, some with loops, short versions and more, so this was super useful. I'm gonna say that for me, sound is definitely not my strong point, but I'm really happy with how the final trailer sounds. I think the music fits, and I think the sound effects really add something extra. Something else that I obviously needed was some animations. For general animations, I use this basic motions pack. It's exactly what you expect, you've got some basic animations, so idle, walk, run, and so on. Another good generic animation pack that I've also used in some videos is the everyday motion pack. Also another nice pack with some general animations. For the rifle animations, right now I'm still using the same animations that I use in the course, meaning they are the free animations that you can download from Mixamo, but as I develop the game, eventually I will replace them with some proper motion capture pack, possibly from this pack which I already picked up a while ago, but for now the free Mixamo animations are more than good enough. Another animation that I needed was for the crafting scene. I wanted the character to be able to hammer a table, Thankfully, I have a really awesome pack that I picked up a few years ago and still works great. It's this crafting mechanism pack. Features tons of crafting animations with tons of variation, it's super useful. Although that animation actually had some issues, basically it was made to work with root motion, which I did not want. So on the animation itself, the feet were sliding a little bit. To fix that, you need to edit the animation. Now, if you're an animator, you would probably do it in something like Blender. But for me, instead, I use the excellent U-Motion asset, which lets you edit humanoid animations directly inside Unity. This is a fully featured animated tool. You can do anything you can do with any animation program. The main benefit is you can do it directly inside Unity. So especially for making some small changes like the one that I needed, it is really super simple. You just load the humanoid animation, change a few keyframes, and that's it. Another animation that I obviously needed was some zombies. There are tons of excellent packs on the store, you just search for zombie animations and tons of results come up. In my case, I already own this one, some really high quality zombie mocap animations. It's got over 100 animations with both root motion and in place, so this one was the perfect pack. I just picked a bunch of animations and used it in my zombies, really nice. For something else that the game needed was some proper environments, and for that the first thing is making it rain. Once again, I used the asset inventory to find some terrain textures, I found some grass and dirt textures. There are hundreds of excellent texture packs on the store, I think the one I used was this one. Basically just use the terrain tool in order to paint the ground. And for the bushes and trees, again I used one of the many packs that I picked up. Some more quote unquote assets that I used were also my own. By that I mean things that I made in previous videos on this channel. For example for the shooting particles, I first made those in the third person shooter video and I just reused that visual here. The icons on the atoms, these are also icons that I drew previously. One of them is from my Red Dead Need system video, it's the Dead Eye icon, then the Lightning Bolt, which is a stamina icon from that same video, as well as just a simple cross -bright. Same thing for the atoms that I used in the crafting UI. I grabbed icons from my previous games, I think all of these are from Survivor Squad, although the gear icon might be from Blueprint Tycoon. These are obviously not final icons for any of the items, but it's a nice example to you. Basically, you should use whatever assets you have made yourself in the past, when you're in the beginning, do anything you can to build your first prototype quickly. The final category are tools. Since the game is in early development, I haven't used that many tools yet, 
I'll probably be using many of the ones that I covered in my asset review series. I did mention the asset inventory, super useful. I'm also using the excellent quantum console. I made a full review video on it. It's a really awesome tool, lets you easily create a console in seconds. Then with that console, you can call any function from inside the game. So it's super useful for testing things, like for example, spawning some items or giving some units some extra action points. For pathfinding, normally I would use the ASAR pathfinding project. It's an excellent asset that makes your pathfinding pretty much essentially free. I could not have made my other Steam games without it. For example, my game Hyper Knights has battles of up to 2000 units. Doing that with that many units pathfinding requires some really insanely fast pathfinding. By using that excellent asset is pretty much how I managed to make that game. However, for this game, since it's turn-based, I think I probably don't need to use it this time. I'm planning to experiment making my own super fast pathfinding with the help of dots. It probably still won't be as fast as the ASAR pathfinding project, but again, this one is turn-based, so it will probably be more than fast enough. Perhaps I might use the Odin Inspector for when I start building out some content, making the many weapons, the enemy stats, and so on. For all of those tasks, having a custom inspector will be very useful. Also, the recently released Odin Validator. It looks really interesting for helping you validate your project. I'll probably use that to make sure there are no hidden errors anywhere in the project. Then, when I get to the polish stage, I will definitely be using Feel to add all kinds of animations and effects. You basically should make every element that the player touches do some kind of animation, and Feel is an excellent tool for doing just that. Alternatively, I might also use Dutween Pro. I haven't used this one much, but I have heard great things about it. It looks really great if you want to do things, especially if you want to do it a bit more through code. I'm thinking I might do an asset review on this one sometime soon. For any 2D elements, I will probably be using the all-in-one sprite shader. It's a really excellent tool for making awesome looking shaders. The other great one by the same developer is the all-in-one VFX toolkit. I'm thinking I might use this one to make some kind of UI effects. And for some more UI polish, I might also use shapes. This one is a great tool for making any kind of interesting shape and making it nicely animated. I've also already mentioned how I'm using Umotion to do any small animation edits that I need. For the save system, I'm still questioning whether I will build it my own or use, for example, Easy Save. It's another asset that I've heard great things about, although I haven't used it myself. Of course, I won't be using my own Mouse Cursor System Pro. Adding a custom cursor is an excellent way to add a little bit of polish to your game, and I made the tool super easy to use, so it will only take a few minutes to add it during the polish stage. Then, in terms of free Unity tools, I'm probably going to use the animation rigging package in some way whenever I need to do some dynamic animations. I'm already using the ragdoll for when the enemies die. I covered ragdoll in detail in a lecture in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Of course, I'm using the new input system. I'm still questioning whether I will be able to make the game playable on a gamepad, but if so, the new input system is definitely going to make that super easy. I am of course using Machine to manage all of my cameras, and like I mentioned, I will probably be using dots for making some super fast pathfinding or really anything else where the game has some performance issues. I'm also still questioning if it's possible to add some kind of multiplayer mode. If so, I will be using netcode for game objects alongside the various UGS tools like Lobby and Relay. And another excellent Unity tool that I might use is the free Unity Photo Mode. It's a really interesting package that is free on their GitHub that I've been meaning to look at. So with all this, as you can see, I'm using lots of stuff, both free and paid. All right, so that's pretty much all of the assets that I'm using and that I'm going to use in order to build my next Steam game. Hopefully this video helped you see a very practical use case for how you can use assets to make a proper game. As you can see, I'm not making a demo. I'm not making just a quick YouTube video, I'm making a proper Steam game with the hope of making it commercially successful, and to achieve that I'm using all of these assets. A bunch of these are on sale right now with the Black Friday sale, so if any of them look interesting to you, definitely check it out, there's links in the description, and remember you can use the coupon CodemonkeyBF22 to get an extra 10% off on orders above $100. And of course, go ahead and add the game to your wishlist if you haven't already, I'm hard at work on the game, so stay tuned for future devlogs. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.